Who is the fastest descender of all time? Okay, today's video starts with a question, and all you cyclists have to answer it. So, what is the best speed of your cycle? Is it 20 kilometers an hour, or 30, or 40, or how about in extreme cases it could be 60 kilometers an hour? But if we would say that a professional cyclist easily touches 100 plus kilometers an hour speed on any descending tracks, you'd be astonished, right? Actually, it is full of risks, but they have the skills to hold on to that speed limit. Hello, cycling lovers, and welcome again to Cycling Right Now, where we bring the latest updates, rumors, and gossip related to this amazing sport. And today's video is going to be exciting as you can ever imagine. The only thing that you have to do is just give us, please, a few of your precious minutes. Number one, there is a wonderful ride of Ion Izagiri. Ion Izagiri hit 113 kilometers an hour on a time trial bike. Ion Izagiri, a rider for the Movie Star team, was competing in the time trial portion of the Tour de Suisse. While descending a hill, Ion Izagiri reached an incredible speed of 113 kilometers per hour on his time trial bike. Ion, who was perfectly coupled to his Kenyan Speedmax CF, achieved such an impressive speed that we are able to see the speedometer on the bike that's chasing after him. It's important that you do not attempt to do it again, because driving at that speed is something that can only be done safely by experienced drivers like Izagiri. The second incident occurred in 2014 during Stage 6 of the Tour of Switzerland. Everything was going smoothly until suddenly, Peter Sagan hit a bump at a very high speed of 82 kilometers an hour, but because of his abilities, he was able to exert control over himself and get back into the race. On the Col de Rinchy, there were only 37 kilometers remaining, and all the riders had been caught. Sky sets at a rapid pace, forcing riders further back to drop out of the race. Among those riders was Mark Cavendish. On the way down, 22-year-old Warren Bergil managed to get away, but his freedom is short-lived. Matthias Frank launches an assault near the summit of the final ascent, and Peter Sagan takes over from him and takes over the lead on the descent, dropping like a bomb and demonstrating his handling skills. The pack is back together on the flatter section, of course, but Tony Martin is pushing himself so hard up front that the peloton splits. Matteo Trenton, another member of their team, takes over and out sprints Daniel Donati and Francesco Gibazzi, both of whom are Italian. Despite his incredible strength, Sagan was unable to close the gap between him and the other competitor. Our third instant is the Liege Bastogne 2019. After finishing third in the Amstel Gold Race and second in the La Flèche Wallonne, it seemed only natural that the writer in good form, Fugel Sang, would finish his Ardine Fortnite with a victory in the La Douyenne. On a dreary and chilly day in Belgium, the seasoned Dane made his move on the 11th and final climb of the 256-kilometer race, latching onto an attack from Canada's Michael Woods, EF Education First, with the Italian Formolo on the Côte de la Roue en Faucon. This allowed the Dane to take the lead and win the race. Following a setback for Woods, Fugel Singh defeated Formolo and then rode away from the competition with 13 kilometers to go. And despite surviving a heart-in-mouth moment on the final descent, when his back wheel skidded on the wet surface and he miraculously avoided a crash, the 34-year-old held his nerve to take the biggest win of his career. And he did this despite the fact that he survived that heart-in-mouth moment. As Fugel Singh won the race for his Astana team for the 13th time this season, he also became the second Dane in cycling history to win one of the sport's five monuments. The first Dane to do so was Rolf Sorensen, who won the very same race in 1993. The next one is Marco's unique Pantani style. Assuming that all riders either don't pedal while descending or pedal with the same amount of power, the researchers found that Froome's descending position was 9% faster than a standard riding position. Pantani style of putting his backside over the rear wheel and the saddle in his midriff is 14% faster, and Sagan's style of sitting further back on the top tube is 19% faster. Are you guys enjoying these descenders so far? See how fast they are, and sometimes the ride becomes very risky. Well, let us know your experience in the comments section, please. You're going to be shocked when you watch this next clip. Oscar Pereiro was riding close to 100 kilometers per hour, but it's likely that he couldn't reach the speed limit of 100 kilometers per hour. Another rider who was riding behind him gave him a little push, and then he went over 100 kilometers per hour. Actually, there are some people who believe that it's against the law, but in reality, it's called a bump trap, and it can be used to increase one's speed. When it comes to descending, there is no question that Vincenzo Nibali is the undisputed leader among the other contenders for the Grand Tour. 
Because of his exceptional abilities, his competitors are now afraid of him attacking on the descents. Once he gets a lead, there are very few people who can catch up to him. In this video clip, Nibali can be seen traveling at a speed that is literally twice as fast as the riders he is passing. The people in his home region of Sicily often refer to him as Lo Squalo, or the shark. After a difficult 245-kilometer ride from Bergamo to Como, Vincenzo Nibali of the Astagna team came out on top to win Il Lombardia, the most prestigious race of the European professional cycling season. He was the pre-race favorite, and he attacked his competitors on the steepest climbs of the course, but they were always able to catch up to him, and he eventually came to the conclusion that he needed to alter his strategy. Nibali launched a significant assault approximately 152 miles before the finish of the race. He launched himself off of a downhill portion of the trail, and he spent the subsequent several minutes ripping corners and riding rails in full tuck position. Because he was going so fast, he narrowly avoided colliding with some of the official race motorcycles that were in front of him. These motorcycles were going at a pace that was insufficient for Nibali. The next instant is way too shocking, and it also poses a threat. The track was going downhill as Bonifacio descended it. He was going quite fast when all of a sudden there was a sharp turn in the road. At first he was terrified, but in no time he was able to use all of his riding skills and everything he had accomplished throughout his entire career. He moved his weight ever so slightly to the right and proceeded to negotiate that treacherous curve. That curve was figuratively and literally hazardous, and there was a possibility that it could have been fatal. Last one is Michael Rasmussen, the Tour de France 2005 Stage 9. This film of the former mountain bike world champion sweeping through the corner shows that Rasmussen was just as good at descending as he was with his EPO-assisted climbing. Rasmussen may be better known for being kicked out of the 2007 Tour de France and for his crash-filled performance in the time trial, but this video shows that he was just as good. Put this one in the category of wasted talent. While there is no shortage of breathtaking videos of downhill mountain biking, there are actually very few decent films of top road racers descending. This is because the cameras frequently switch between groups of cyclists on the road, and the TV motorbikes are unable to keep up with their pace. So these were some clips we've compiled that show some of the best descenders in action. In most of these clips, the athletes are hurtling down a mountainside at speeds reaching up to 62 miles per hour or even faster. And that's it for today, fans. We sincerely hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please click on the like button and make sure you share it with all your friends and family. And if you have any questions or comments for us, you're always welcome to share them with us in the comment space down below. We always love checking in and hearing from you, our viewers. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or you'll see even more of our incredible videos. And you can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected just for you. One more thing before we let you go, please. Make sure you hit that bell icon on your way out the door. That way you are guaranteed to be notified every time we have a new update and upload on our channel. Hey, we thank you for spending time out of your busy day to hang out with us today. And we'll look forward to catching up with you in our next video. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.